Hi, this is Andreas from Predithera. In this video tutorial, you will learn how to use Breeze to make a classification model from hyperspectral images, and then use it to predict a class of new unknown samples. This video tutorial is a continuation of the video tutorial classification of NUFS step 1, so it might be good to watch that video first. In this video, I will add a second class variable to classify the type of NUFT and also test two types of classification models. First, let's go to the record view. In the NUFTS classification study, we have nine images where we had already set the class NUT or SHELL. If we change the segmentation level in the menu under the table, we can see that we have removed the background and identified the sample objects in all these images. Now, let's add a new class variable and import reference information for the NUT type for each sample. To do that, I'll press the Import tab, select to Import Reference Data, I will select the file called NUTS Classification Train. In the table view, you can see the new NUT type class variable that was imported, and the reference values have automatically been matched to the correct sample objects. If I press the Explore tab, I can see a PCA based on the average spectrum for each object. Under color, I can then select NUT type to see how the different types cluster. And we can see that all the different NUT types are on the left and that the shell are, are clustered on the right. Let's create a classification model for the NUT type variable. To do that, I will press the model button in the lower right corner to come to the model view. Here we have the sample model that we had created in the previous tutorial and the classification model for NUT or SHELL. I will press the Add button in the lower left corner to make a new model. I will select the Classification tab and PLSTA. I will then write a name. In the first step of the model wizard, I will select to use the NUT type variable. In the second step of the wizard, uh, we can see that the samples that will be included to train the model are the samples that are in the train group, which are also the samples that then also had uh, reference data for this NUT type variable. In the third step of the wizard, uh, we can see that by default all spectral bands are included uh, except the first and last bands. Uh, by default, Breeze removes the first and last 4% of the bands, since these are often more noisy in many spectral cameras, which is okay in this case. In the fourth step of the wizard, a PLSDA classification model with four components has been built automatically using the autofit function. Under components, I will press the add button twice to add two more components. In the overview graph, we can see that the model improved slightly. In the last step of the wizard, you can see the class separation by pressing the tab for the different classes under the NUT type versus YCALC NUT type plot. What you should try to look for is separation in the horizontal dimension. We can see we have an overlap between the all known samples and the hazelnut samples. For the shell class, we can see that we don't have an overlap with any other classes. The variable overview graph shows that the all known and hazelnut could not be as well classified as the other types. With the new classification model selected, I will press the classification tab. Here I can see how well the training data was classified by the PLSDA model. For example, we can see that of the 13 almonds, 
three has been classified as hazelnut, and three has been classified as no class. In total, 90.7% of all the nuts were correctly classified. Let's compare the PLSD model with a different classification method to see if we can get a better model. Press the add button, go to the classification tab, and this time I will select to use the Simca method. I will then also write a name for this model. In the classification wizard, I will first select a nut type variable. In the next step of the wizard, I will just press next and then next again. In the Simca method, one PCA model is created for each class. The overview graph is showing you how much of the variation is explained by the Simca model. A sample is then compared to each class model to determine if it belongs to that class or not. In the Kuhlmann's plot, you can set the critical distance for each class model by dragging the red vertical line to adjust the limit to include all objects for that class. Samples to the left of the red line are included, and samples to the right of the red line are excluded. In this case, all almond samples are included in the almond model. By clicking on the tabs underneath the plot, I can adjust the limit for each class model. Once I have set all the critical distances for all the models, I can click Finish. In the classification tab, we can now see how all the samples in the training data were classified using the Simca model. We see that in this case we have 96.9% of the samples in the training data that were correctly classified, which is an improvement over the PLSDA model. To validate the model, you should always use an external test set to see how well it can classify samples that were not in the training data. Let's go back to the record view. I will then open NUTS classification study and select the test group this time. I will go to the import tab and then import reference data for this group. And this is the NUTS classification test sample spreadsheet. As you can see now, we have a column on the right side here that's been added, which shows the NUT type for the test set. Now let's press the model button to go back to the model view. And then when the Simca model is selected, I will click on the edit button down here. And then under external record test group, I will press the plus sign to add this test group. I will then go up again here, back to the classification table. We can see here that of the 23 samples, all were correctly classified. Let's see how well the PDSDA model performs for the same test image. Click on the PLSDA model, go to edit and then press add on external record test group. We can see here that of the 23 samples in the test group, uh, 20 were correctly classified and three were incorrectly classified. So in this case, it seems like the Simca method was slightly better. Now let's test these new models by making a workflow in the play mode. In the lower right hand corner, I will press the play button to move to the play view. We can see we already have uh, an existing workflow here, but then to add a new workflow, we'll press the add button. I'll select the record tab, and I will select the test group. If I press the graph tab, I can see that by default, Breeze included all the models that I have in the model view 
into this workflow. This means I had the two NUT type models, which was a PLSDA and a SIMCA, and also I had the existing NUT or shell model. To modify my workflow, I will press the edit button. In the menu on the right under the analysis tree, you can see the steps in the workflow. First you have the sample model, and then a number of descriptors, which is the NUT type models and the NUT or shell model. By clicking on them, you can configure them in the menu on the right side. I will click on the NUT or shell model, and then press remove. To exclude this from the workflow. If I click on the first NUT type model, I can see that this descriptor is using the SIMCA model. In the alias field, I will then write SIMCA NUT type. I will then click on the, the second NUT type descriptor, and this is using the PLSDA model. So I will call that PLSDA NUT type. In Breeze, you can add many different types of descriptors to your workflow. If I click on the object level, and then press add subnode down here, I can add a new descriptor. In the method drop down menu, I can select a number of different descriptors that are available in Breeze. In this example, I will show you how to add a descriptor called spatial values from sample. By default, this output is calculating the surface area for each object. If I press duplicate, it then adds additional descriptors. I will here add the width, and I'll press duplicate again. I will add the circumference. Okay, so now I have a workflow that calculates uh, the NUT type using the SIMCA and PLSDA model, and then also calculates the area, width, and circumference for each object. If I then press the up button in the upper right corner, I can see an overview of my new analysis tree. The table should look like this after you have updated the new workflow. The SIMCA model and the PDSD model has now been applied to classify each object in this image. That concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you would like to have step-by-step -step instructions on what I just showed you in this video, I recommend that you visit the Predictera website to download the Breeze tutorial classification of NUTS Step 2 Advanced. There are also quick guides that you can download that describe specific features in the software. You can also download a free 30-day trial of Breeze. Good luck!